music, video games, books, television. They are the five families of media. But we are the family that talks about it. This is Multimedia Mafia. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time it is that you're now listening to Multimedia Mafia. We appreciate you listening. And tonight's episode is all about 90s R&B and rap. We're going to have a very interesting show because it's unlike two white people talking about rap. And of course, <laughs> Isaiah's shooting a look. Uh, Isaiah, you're, obviously, you're not white, you're Puerto Rican. Yes, I am not white. So let's talk about rap. We don't have any black people in the booth. But we're going to talk about rap. That's and not forgive ra- me now for fucking any of this up. You're going to fuck it all up. I and th- mind you, that's not racism. That's just the way it is. <laughs> anyway. All right, go ahead. Tonight, like I said, we're talking about, we're talking about 90s rap and R&B specifically. Because the 90s is a magical time in, in, in rap music. Because 90s was the, was the, was the climax. Are you sure? Do you it was the pinnacle of rap. What year were you born? Oh my God! Here we go. Were you born in like '98? I was born last year. Yeah, '98. <laughs> so, so you so, really don't have. <laughs> you really weren't there for much of the rap game in the '90s, bro. No, I wasn't. I was there for probably like no, not gonna, no, not the best year. No, no, certainly not. But it's okay. He listened to it growing up. Like, Pac and Biggie were already dead by the time you even hit the scene. Right? But around the early 2000s, people were still bumping it. Yes, they were. They absolutely were. Um, Okay. So, let's talk a little bit about... Wait, what year was you born? I was born in 1990. What about you? 88. You guys are fucking old. Bunch of boomers. (laughs) I am old. 31, baby. Amanda is old. Oh, what are you? You're two years ahead of me. I don't care. You're old. I don't give a shit. I don't feel old. Anthony, you're closer to forty than me. I don't care. You're 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 an old head. And Isaiah's only what twenty three, right? That's, this has nothing oh to do with the rap game. Anywho, but it has everything to do with the rap game. So we're gonna tonight. We're we're gonna be talking about Biggie. Well, I mean, for then honestly, it's me then too because I mean, I was around, but I was like. I mean, at five years old, am I really? So who's listening? your favorite artist? Just go ahead off the top of your head. Who's your favorite artist? From the Not night? Of the, no, no. Who's your favorite artist? Out of uh huh, my whole life. Yeah, who's your favorite artist? Post Malone. You see, that's why. You don't know. <sighs> about It'll always 90s. be posty. You don't know nothing about no nineties. But I'm you saying, know. like at five years old, I wasn't listening to Biggie or Tupac. Why not? At five years old, I when don't I know. Five, I'm not I even wet behind the ears yet. Fuck! I was listening to Wu Tang, DMX. I was listening to all of them. Yeah, you came out the womb listening to that. Don't be racist. Anyway. <laughs> Not racist, stupid ass. Anyway, we're going to be talking about the careers I'm going to try. TLC, Tupac Shakur, and the Notorious B.I.G. Big I. Huh? Big I. B.I.G. I'm saying Biggie. Bi- no, go ahead, go. Biggie Smalls. Meow. <sighs> and here's what's crazy about the three, me- at least Pac and Biggie. I got to understand Pac and Biggie, but TLC... Well, Amanda had to choose something, too, so this is what she wanted to talk about. TLC was a good band until Lisa Left Eye Lopez had to go take a swanee. Whoa. I'm sorry, what? Whoa, whoa, dude. <laughs> you honestly are going to start the episode saying that Lisa Left Eye Lopez took a swanee. Which, by the way, she didn't. She she died in a car crash. I know. I just Didn't she, like, fly out the... Never mind. I don't want to be. Shout out to all the seatbelts out there. I don't. I don't want to be rude to her family. This is in no disrespect to Lopez's family. So. Shout out the Left Eye family. She died Love in two thousand and two. So, Amanda, since you're already starting, let's talk about no, TLC. No, no, no. We don't have to start with me first. We, no, it's okay. No, I'd rather have one of you go first. It's okay. I must insist. Go ahead. <laughs> No, it's okay. Can you I'm name the members of TLC, you're, you're Amanda? Can I name her death them? And everything. Lisa Left Eye Lopez, yeah. Rosanda uh-huh. Chili Thomas, uh-huh. and Tione T. Boz Watkins. Uh-huh. Oh, oh. Not, I don't know if it's Tione or Tione. What were their greatest hits? Go ahead. Scrubs. Uh huh. Sing the Waterfalls. Chorus. Sing the sing the hook. Sing a scrub the is a guy that thinks he's flying, also known as a bust down. 
always talking about what he wants and just what sits on word? his broke ass. You missed the word. I probably did. But <laughs> it is what it is. I'm white. Hey, yo. Sounds about white. <laughs> I regret agreeing to do this episode. <laughs> Anthony, correct me if I'm wrong. You're wrong. Damn. You used to sing Waterfalls all the time. No. Fun fact, uh, yes, no, that was your song. No, I didn't. No? No. Oh, my God. Ian. I wasn't a fan of TLC. No disrespect to TLC, but they just weren't a band that I liked. Who was your favorite women's group? I don't really have a favorite wom- women's group. Beagles! What? Well, they were Mama. formed in 1991 in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Two of the members, Tion Watkins and Lisa Lopez, were originally part of a group called Second Nature with Crystal Jones. Um, but the group's name was being an acronym for three uh, three of the girls' names. Um, so due to conflicts with that uh, member, Crystal, she left and then it was just two members. Um which they had a self-titled album that came out in 91, Damien Dames, um, featured on a track for Damien Dames' 1991 self-titled album. Mm -hmm. Um, So then in 1991, uh, Rosanda Thomas was a backup dancer for Damien Dames, but she was chosen to be the third member of the group, and that's how then it became TLC, um, you know, the whole entire band. Uh, but there's obviously t Boz, Left Eye, and Chili, therefore naming it TLC. Because uh, Lisa, Tion, and Rosanda, obviously the first names are not going to be TLC. It'll be TLR. Are you really discussing this right now? <laughs> yes. As if nobody could catch the drift of where their name yeah, came Yeah, we from. got it. We understood. Everyone fucking knows. You wanted a background. I'm giving it to you. But everyone fucking knows where the goddamn All right, then I'm not going to... I'm not going to... I'm not... Oh, Creep was one of their songs. Yep, yep. I definitely regret approving this episode. Okay. I'm not going to speak anymore. No, keep speaking. No, it's okay. Get, you just keep going. So, <clears throat> like I was saying... Why was her name Left Eye? She only had one eye? I don't really know, to be honest with you. Why There's she- is just a nickname? Could be just a nickname. Well, she always walked around with a patch on her eye, right? No. Nope. No, she did not. I'm confusing her. <laughs> no? Nope. Can somebody tell me what the hell was the left eye nickname for? <sighs> um, it is a good question. No, it doesn't come up. I don't know. I'd have to Google it. I really don't. I want to know why she's named T Boz. T Boz. T Boz. Um, let me see here. Hey, yo, these mugs are gorgeous. You could pick them up at greenarrowmedia.org. I'm blanking out right now. Mhm. What does that say? TLC's 1994 doesn't really tell you. She died in. A, she died on my birthday. She died Damn. April 25th, 2002. And then you agreed to talk to her today. Ta- I'm not talking to her. Talk about her today. Lisa renamed herself Left Eye because she was told that she had beautiful eyes, particularly the left one. How? She made herself sound crippled. What the fuck? What the fuck? How do you have one eye better than the other? Her left eye. That was a she good She also side. wore glasses uh-huh. that had a condom over her left eye. That was it. I knew she had so, a pa- not a patch, but she and had something over her eye. And then later on, she had a black stripe painted under her left yes. eye. Yes, 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 yes. They, um, they, they came, they, TLC had nine singles in the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they had four multi platinum albums. Their second studio album, Crazy Sexy Cool, was released in 94, um, receiving the diamond certification from the uh, RIAA, which is the Recording Industry Association of America. This is the only album by a female group to have received that diamond certification. Then their third album, Fan Mail, was released in 99. So I started picking up TLC, obviously, as I was getting a little older, you know, four or five years old. I'm really not going to know who they are because I'm just playing with Barbie dolls and not really anything else. And TLC, I started to obviously watch TRL and all those MTV channels. And, you know, in 99, I was nine years old and I heard Scrubs and I... 
I became a, a little bit of a fan. So, I mean. Turn up. TLC were music and fashion icons of the 90s, but were also known for promoting safe sex, anti-drug, and HIV AIDS prevention messages throughout their music. Um, <clears throat> the group also promoted the message of female empowerment in their song lyrics as well. Um, clue here, uh, uh, fun fact, not a fun fact, because I don't think it was fun for her. In, 19, in the late 1990s, t Boz was actually battling sickle cell anemia. Um, and she became a spokesperson for the Sickle Cell Disease Association of America. And then, unfortunately, on April 25th, 2002, uh, the group, uh, Lisa, I mean, the singer of the group, Lisa Left Eye Lopez, died in a car crash while filming a documentary in Honduras. Mm. Um, but they did continue on. They didn't stop what they were doing. They continued on uh, to a two-member group in 2005. Um, 2007, they started making appearances again as guest performers for award shows, festivals, and concerts. They went on uh, a little later into a couple more years down the line to North America tour with New Kids on the Block and Nelly. That actually doesn't sound like a really bad lineup. I'm not going to lie. And why are you staring at me like that? No, I'm listening to you. It's very interesting. Um, making it the first tour group did in 15 years. And then they did have another self-titled fifth studio album that came out in 2017. But I didn't, I don't know any tracks off that album. And I don't even think it got anywhere, to be honest. And then that's really it. And then other than appearing on different, you know, like shows here and there and music, uh, VMAs and all that. I don't really ever, you don't ever see them perform anymore, to my knowledge. I don't yeah, ever I hear from them. I can't imagine the last time I listened or saw TLC like bumping something. I mean, it's crazy <clears> though <throat> if you go on to their Spotify channel, they still have like how many monthly subscribers that listen to them every month? Well, yeah, they've etched their way into hip hop history. You're not going to be able to take that spot regardless of not whether the band is performing or if the members are living or not. What they did with those albums, the mega hits that they were, they've solidified their place in music history. It's the long and short, you know, it's the long and short of that. It's, that's it. Yeah, I I again, I I like their music. They're not bad. Um, TLC does bring, when I think of 90s music, R&B especially, I think of TLC. Obviously, there's a whole bunch of other artists out there, but they really paved the way. And I guess because, I don't, man, I don't want to be sound sexist or anything like that, but because I'm a woman. And, you know, female empowerment. No, nothing wrong with Scrubs that. Scrubs is a great song. And that's all I have for TLC. Anybody have any questions? That I can't answer. What does no. TLC stand for? Uh, we just did this. It's their names. What's Teresa name? Louise Kaola. That's what it's <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our sister, Teresa. Shout out to my lovely girlfriend. Love you, baby. All right. Very good, Amanda. We're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, we're going to be following up Amanda's TLC segment with a little segment by Isaiah talking about Biggie Smalls. Stay tuned. Are you looking for a vinyl LP or a cassette tape, 45 RPM? If so, you've come to the right place, Golden Spins. We have thousands of titles in stock and ready to ship. Call us at 862-336-2275 or go to our store at discogs.com backslash seller backslash golden spins backslash profile. We can find whatever you may need. We proudly accept PayPal and every major credit card. And we're back. We're talking about 90s hip-hop and rap. Amanda kicked us off on this episode with her little discussion about TLC. Hey. And now we're moving on from there. We're going to shift the mic over to Isaiah. And Izzy's going to be talking about the notorious B.I.G. Go ahead, Izzy. Yes, sir. Christopher Wallace, a.k.a. Biggie Schmalls. Uh, so what do you want to know, yo? Give me some, give me some facts about B.I.G. He died. They wow. shot him. They shot. They did my boy dirty. He was in a um. He was in a Chevy Suburban. 
they drive by his ass. Why though? Because he just got beef. He got static. You know. So was mo it really money, mo money, mo problems? But did maybe this is for later in the episode? But did Tupac and Biggie hate one another? At the end. I thought they were like best buds. Nah, at first they were cool. Yeah, they liked each other. A lot. Right. Then one started fucking the other one's bitch and all this. Oh, and man, you can't They keep made it. diss tracks to each other. See, that's why girls be starting all the trouble. Here we go. That's not Girl, the right episode, the honey. girls killed the best rappers known t- in this in, That's in their the world. problem if they want to beef with one another over a vagina. That's their problem. Are you drunk? Keep the beef out of the music industry. Can you please clarify what you're talking about right now? How did a woman... Or women, multiple, doesn't matter. How did Vagina uh, come between Biggie and Pac? Because fucking Tupac was fucking his baby moms. Oh, that's foul, Pac. If yeah. that's true. He was fucking his baby moms. Is this moms. true? He released the track, That's Why I Fucked Your Bitch, You Fat Motherfucker. You, you, are you talking about Faith Evans? Fuck yeah. that bitch in the click you claim. Which is the song Hit Him Up. Wow, him up. for real? Yup. <laughs> That's horrible. And then they went at each other's neck. Now they both dead. You see what happens? You see what happens? Anyways, Biggie Smalls, so what the got greatest you rapper to this day, mm. he released about, uh, well, his career was short. It was like, what, like four years, five years or something? Uh, Something that effect, yeah. Yeah, three, three to five years. He released like, Three albums, four albums. Uh, Biggie Smalls, while alive, released two after he passed. After he was killed, he didn't pass away. Yep. And his posthumous albums included "Born Again" and then duets. The final chapter in two thousand five. He then, released "Ready to Die," "Life After Death." Yep. And I don't know the other one he released. "Born Again." "Born Again." Well, that that's when he was alive, or that was a. No, he was dead by then. All right. Yeah. So his. His catalog isn't that big, but that's to his early death to blame. So why did you get into him? Because he's the greatest rapper of all time. Why? Are, why aren't you into him? I'm not. A, I'm just not a fan. Why like not? I just there's only like I can't even say there's one song that I like. I just not a fan. Well, his music doesn't get me. Favorite, that's why your favorite artist is Post Malone. Okay. <sighs> but Post Malone has songs about feelings. Uh huh. Has songs about. Yes, this he guy does. Has songs and Biggie about Smalls feelings. doesn't. No, to me he doesn't. But what does he rap about? Are you out of your fucking mind? Everything he rapped, he made a a a legit song about how to sell drugs, beginning to end the Ten Crack Commandments. Yeah, that one song, could, you could hold down a whole block. Oh Just selling God. drugs, be a kingpin. Off of listening to that one song, he gives you the instructions. I wonder how many, how many, <laughs> and you—that's it. You could build a career, an illegal career, off of that one song. Forget, for even. All right, let's put that song aside. What about the song "Suicidal Thoughts"? Suicidal thoughts is big feelings. He's on the phone. All right, with, so um, I take that back because again, he's on I don't, the phone with um, I don't, with, uh, I don't Puff listen. Daddy. He's yeah. on the phone with Puff Daddy, and he's telling Puff Daddy like the depression he has. And how he's like, fuck it, I'm going to just end myself. And well, Puffy's deep. trying to calm him down on the other end. And it ultimately, the end of the song, he uh, he pops himself. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the, not really, but in the song, theoretically. So I didn't, I, don't, I didn't give him a chance. So I'll take it back that he just doesn't, he's just not a flavor. But I he's like. always been a guy that, like, he kind of foreshadowed his death. He talked about dying a lot and not giving a fuck. So he kind of... Well, you think he knew he was going to die? He he had an album, Ready to Die. He, like his first album was called Ready to Die. Ready to Die. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The guy was just nuts. I don't, you know... But he brought that real, real that nobody other... Nobody, well, not any other artist would dare to do. Suicide of Thoughts was like a dark track. Mm-hmm. Like too dark that I don't think any rapper would put out a track like that like damn yeah i mean when you put aside like his big big like super duper hits like hypnotize or or juicy juicy, which are like you know party songs type of thing Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. bullshit and party and bullshit and party. You come to shit like Suicidal Thoughts, Ten Crack Commandments, mm-hmm. Who Shot You, um, Mo Money, Mo Problems. Was Who Shot That's you? the only song I know. I think Who Shot You was beef to, wasn't that, nah, that wasn't a track to Tupac, was it? I'm not sure if that was, I, mean, I don't think I, so. I could be wrong. It's been a minute since I've listened to it. Um, so I guess for you it'll always be Biggie over Tupac. Of course, there's no. Why there's, don't you like Tupac? There's no challenge to that because Tupac, he was more like a, a he's more like a mainstream, and it's gonna was, be a field day with you and Dad one day because Dad is all Tupac. See, because you, you, Tupac <laughs> is too soft for me. That's what it is. Oh, oh, he's too soft. He's I'll, too soft. I'll give me a chance to retort when I start talking about Pac. <laughs> Uh, don't get your nipples in a twist. But <laughs> Tupac wasn't it, you know. I like some of his tracks. Ambition, my ambitions as a rider. But he was more like West Coast. Yeah. And two Tup- and Biggie was East Coast. He, you know, he, he was over here. He had that flavor, you know, that New York flavor. Flavor. Mm-hmm. Well, of course he had that New York flavor. He's from fucking New York. Yeah, and it was just, you know, his flow. His type of style, it was, it was from I was something I was familiar with, you know. But Biggie was, I I never came across another artist that was, came close to Biggie and his style. Not even his son could replicate his style. His son is a I don't know what the fuck he's doing. He his has, son is a rapper. Uh, well, he tried to be. He has like a group there where somebody in the group is better than him, and you're fucking Biggie's son, anyways. He has a daughter. Um, she's a fashion designer, and she has another son. I believe he has his full name, so Christopher Wallace, um, Jr. But no, no, know he, he does. no, no, he's he he's he's he uh, no, he doesn't. It's not Christopher Wallace Jr. Well, it it is. It's it is Christopher Wallace Jr. But I mean, it's Christopher so, so what George. Are you I mean, they had some middle names. I don't think. I oh, never mind. I forget what I just said. No, that was that it was, was Junior. Yeah, 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 that was his. I name. was thinking of someone else. I apologize. Uh, he's all. I mean, his stage name is Lil Biggie, and of course, Lil Biggie Smalls. Yeah, no, <laughs> it ain't it ain't cutting it for me, G. No, I agree. I don't think I don't think anybody could be Biggie. The way he was able to flip, the way he was able to flip a line. And to carry the last bit of, like, the sentence into the next line so easily, it was incredible. Because a lot of people kind of, especially you think this is the mid-90s or the early 90s when it comes to rap. Rap, you know, a lot of people rap that kind of A, B, A, B, C, D kind of style. Yeah. You know, where they rhyme this, rhyme that, and then the last two lines will rhyme one another right. and he didn't do that he had a flow he told a story and as the song as a line was ending it was also beginning the next line of the verse right a very complicated style um if i could think of but one it came so naturally now he it was so naturally like he would take he would tell you a, a story but the story wouldn't be like choppy or anything like that because he had to make everything rhyme it just came out so smoothly where you thought he was just telling you a story but it all rhymes together there's a beat over it and there you go you have a fucking golden track he did it many times um uh give me the loot was a story about him and a buddy he came back from jail they had some guns and there was like fuck it we're gonna go rob some people Mm -hmm. and at the end he goes through this whole journey of how He's going to rob this bitch, and he robbed this dude, oh and God. the cops came, and he got into a shootout with them. I'm not going back to jail. Bob, 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 shot a cop. Um, warning. Uh, who was calling him? Uh, somebody was calling him, saying that they were just at the dice game, and they overheard that some people were going to come to his house and uh, rob him. Mm-hmm. Um, but this whole track is him on the phone. Saying, you know, getting the message that some people are going to come to a spot and he's describing, you know, how it's going to be a murder scene if they come to his house that, you know, they're going to kick in the door. 
I got C4, I got dogs, you know, like, oh my God. I fuck them up, I dare them, this and that. He's just living a life of violence. Yeah. Or lived a life of violence. And then he ends the song rhyming, hold on, I hear somebody coming, and then the song skips to audio of two dudes coming to the door, you know, saying, yo, I hear something, and then end up being shot by Biggie. But... It was. It, it's just. It's just a masterpiece. It's. It's a, a masterpiece one after the other. Ready to Die is the best album to start with, so that way you could you get a good feel of how big he is. I don't disagree with that. I, I think you're 100 percent right, and it's just it pisses me off when you really sit there and think that he was alive for 24 years. That's it. He he etched his name in hip-hop history and is probably one of the greatest rappers of all time. I mean, he is considered one of the greatest rappers of all time. And when it comes down to who's bigger or who's better, Pac or Biggie, Pac or Biggie, there's always that fight for the top spot. And it's like he did that in 24 years. And mind you, he wasn't rapping much as, like, you know, as an early youth. No. If Biggie had more years to his career, it... For me, it would be, without a doubt, it would clean up the whole th- battle between Tupac and Biggie. But since he only has three, four years in his career, it's kind of fucked up to put them together. But I'm not too sure how long Tupac's career was because he was unfortunately killed, too, in a drive-by. Same age. Same age. Two, so well, what? Tupac was 25 when he died. So 25, 24... Yeah, but how long was his career? Pac started writing in like 1989. That's when he really started. So you're talking seven years. Exactly. So, you know, seven years worth of work compared to four years, you know? Something like that. Um, know, he probably has, what, three, four more albums over him? Yeah, I mean, I, I th- well, no, he's got a lot more than just three or four four albums exactly. over Exactly, so it's like, it's kind of unfair based on numbers-wise. But when you listen to the two, I guarantee you, Biggie will come out on top nine times out of ten. But it also depends on the listener, you know. That's the whole point of music. You're sharing it with one another. People got different opinions. And for me, I I think uh, Biggie blessed the rap game. He's, he's at the top. He's the pinnacle. He's wearing the crown. Mm, just like on the album, he's wearing the crown. Yeah, so I... For me, Biggie, go listen to Ready to Die. It speaks for itself. He'll tell you a story. He'll insult you. You know, he'll tell you how much you want to fuck him, this and that. Mm-mm. Yeah, One More Chance. That was a freaky song. Um, what, Who Shot Ya? He just hated somebody. I don't know who the fuck he was talking about, but he hated that motherfucker. On Who Shot Ya? Oh, my God. That shit was terrible. I don't... I think it was about Tupac. I'm not too sure. Uh, maybe as a coincidence, I'm not too sure. There is a lyric off of the one song, Me and My Bitch, that always made me look at Biggie a little suspect. Oh, you look so good. I suck your daddy's dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you look that's so good. I suck on your daddy's dick. It's a little... I'm a little I'm like what? yeah, but if you think about it, it's like <laughs> yo, how how bad could that chick be? That chick must be like that's a bad like, bitch. So you bad would as suck fuck. her dad's dick. If she's bad as hell, he's saying like yo, this chick is so bad. Like I'll suck on her daddy's dick. Like it just <laughs> what? What did what did what did it make you think that damn that chick must be hot? Like. Well, yeah, I get why he's saying it. But well, it's just a little he like, said it because uh, he said it because she looked good. Her dad must look good. So. No, <laughs> no, he said it because it's a it's a callback to a Richard Pryor joke. Richard Pryor on his one album, Wino and Junkie, um, he said this bitch was fine, pops. I ain't lying. This bitch was so fine, I wanted to suck a daddy's dick. Shit, is that fine enough for your ass? <laughs> so, it's 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 a callback to a Richard Pryor joke. But the the whole idea made me go. I'm sorry. What did I just hear? Can we rewind that? You just just have by to pause and say what? Yeah, I, I literally had to go. What? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you doing? Uh, let's look up his well, his most well known lines. Um, 
he also had a way of making you want to say the next line, make or say the next. Um, well, everybody knows Mo Money Bro problems. It's like one. Not what I mean. No, no. Okay, I'll what I mean to you is, first. No, no, no. What I mean is, you're listening to him and you're assuming what the next rhyme scheme is going to be, and then he was able to flip it on you without realizing it. Take the song Big Papa, right? Mm-hmm. About three quarters of the way in, he's talking about leaving, leaving the club with the girl. And the line goes, so we can steam on the way to the telly, go fill my belly, a T-bone steaks, cheese, eggs, and Welsh's, gr- and Welsh's grape. But he never says the word jelly, which would be the word that would go there. And so he goes, a T-bone steak, cheese, eggs, and what's his grape? Conversate for a few, because then we, because f- in a few we gonna do what we came to do. Ain't that right, Boo? True. true. My point is, when you're a master wordsmith like Biggie was, you can have people. It was like he, um, he broke everyone's like ankles. You know what I mean with a crossover? Because just when you think that was the word that was going there, he never says it. And it goes right around. I got it. And he just starts the next line with conversate for a few with a brand new rhyme scheme. And not everyone was like, it's so easy to just say jelly. Well, it's just grape jelly because he's already set up that that sound with go to the telly, fill my belly. Well, it's just grape jelly. It just works. But he was so good at what he did. He didn't have to put that word there. Right. And he still just made the word, made the song flow right into the next thing. I yeah. see it. But it's, you know, that was, it kind of, but it all felt natural. You know, like Anthony said, he was a wordsmith. But on Ten Crack Commandments, he was giving you life lessons. Well, not really life lessons because it was for the drug game. But I was going to say, what life drugs. lessons are you getting out you of him? You shouldn't be dealing drugs. But if you were, he was giving you pointers like, hey, look, you got to watch out for this shit because it could really fuck you up. Obvious, you know, don't get high on your own supply. But one of the bigger ones was if you don't have the clientele, say hell no. So whoever's supplying you the drugs, say, yo, I need you to push this for me. But if you know you don't have the clientele, you have to say no because two weeks later, they're going to be knocking at your door asking for the money. But you couldn't push the work. So now he's coming down your throat for the cash, but you never had the clientele. So he would give you pointers. On, some you know, life, some life lessons. I some guess. pointers. If you was a drug dealer, you well, gotta stay away from. Let's just talk about the ten crack commandments. What are the ten crack commandments? Well, here they go. Never let no one know how much dough you hold. Well, yes. that's always true. Never talk about your money. That's a, that's a that's, legit that's life legit. lesson. Legit. Yes. Yeah. My money as soon as is they my. Know, how much money you have, you become a target. Exactly. One hundred percent. Never let them know your next move. That's true too. Big one. Big one. That's true, too. Yep, because then they can't calculate they, and try to yeah, hurt you. If they know your next move, they might take you out and go for what you're going for. Never trust nobody. Yep, big 100%. one. 100%. Well, I mean, you can't trust, you can't go into business. These are not just crack commandments. They're not just crack <laughs> commandments. <laughs> These, you, I mean, you can't go into business unless you trust somebody. And if you can't trust them, you can't do business with them. So don't exactly. trust anyone. It, some of this stuff you could translate into... A normal working life. Number four, never get high on your own supply. Uh, never want to do that. Yeah, no. No, you're just cutting into your own product at that point. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Yeah, my capital. And if it's not your product, then you owe somebody money. Yep. Never sell no crack re- uh, where you rest at, which means don't sell out of your own house. Don't shit where you eat. Yes, because the fiends, i seen pictures of it on Instagram. They will line up. In front of your door like it's a supermarket. Oh, my God. They they will stay there, and there's no getting them away from there unless you go outside and start hitting them with a bat or some shit. Number <laughs> six, that goddamn credit, debt it. You think a crackhead paying you back? Forget shit, it. Forget it. Crackheads don't pay you back, so don't give them free samples. Yes. Or don't say, you know, you know I give, got you next time. Some you know, dealers me, make exactly. a big mistake selling in the hood and thinking that a crackhead is going to come back and pay them. But it's just a never-ending credit. You owe me 20, you owe me 50, they pay you back 30, then they so try they to get more credit. They don't pay back at all. Yeah. Yeah, they just run off with your shit. Somebody your else will sell them something. F- Number seven, keep your family and business completely separated. Well, exactly. duh. 
But you, that could translate into a normal working life too. Some shit are just you Business can't involve the family. Family needs to stay out. Mm-hmm. Never keep no weight on you. Yep. Leave it at your house. Leave it somewhere. Leave it. Leave I it. wouldn't leave it at my house. I'd leave it somewhere. Leaving it in the car. Sometimes no, you can't even do. No, you can't do that at all. Sometimes you just leave it at the house. Sometimes you find a brick in a wall, and you just let that brick come out, and then you hide it behind the brick. Thanks, you, Anthony. You could do that, or you could pay somebody to hold it. That's also a, a good A lot of answer. drug dealers did that, too. They would say, hey, look, you want a little cash, whatever it is. You don't mean, you don't know me. I don't know you. Strictly business. Hold this. If you ain't getting bagged, stay the fuck from the police. If you ain't getting what? Bagged. If you ain't getting caught. Yeah, if you ain't getting caught. Well, yeah. Yeah, exactly. don't so fuck with them. Just, you know, because some of these DEA officers, they will play it like, oh, no, we cool. Like, you know, we just, you know, we just came to hang out, whatever it is, you know. I scratch your back, you scratch my back. and It's never like you that. You know, I'll, I'll let you know who's dealing on your block, and you let me know who your supplier is and shit like that. And then, you know, we'll figure something out. But it's you should never talk with never never ever consignment strictly for live men not for freshmen. No, nah, I don't know what that is. <laughs> uh, I think what he was trying to say with that line is um, strictly for live men. Now it's it's uh, let's see. Oh, it's it, in the sort of fashion a street chemist would trust. Uh, with trusted connections, though standing firmly on his ground, which means uh, you want to get in this line of business, you better be serious about it and not just kind of be like, I can do anything like this. I'm so excited to be a crack like, dealer. Oh, this is just a side gig. I'm so excited to be a crack dealer. <laughs> Why'd you you got to be full time. You got to take it serious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think that you can literally translate some of these. Ten crack commandments. That was the whole ten. That was the whole ten. Yeah. Right, look at that. You could definitely translate See? some of these. I feel smarter. Like- I never listened to a Tupac track where he was telling me, you know, how, how to be <laughs> not productive. <laughs> how, oh, you about to learn? Made me smarter. You about never, to learn never, then? Never did that. Never, never. You about to learn then? We're gonna take a short commercial he break. He's gonna school you today. I'm gonna school you and Tupac. We'll be uh. back. Green Arrow Media has partnered up with StepUpWellness.com. Are you looking for a program to help support a healthy lifestyle? It's never too late for a healthy change, believe me. Today is your lucky day. Check out StepUpWellness.com. It has over 500 different products to choose from, all with your health in mind. They have supplements and vitamins, protein bars and shakes and powders and drinks. Anything that's going to go into your body to make you feel better and live better, StepUpWellness.com has it. If you're in the market for online health, wellness, and fitness products, then look no further. Go to stepupwellness.com today. And we're back on Multimedia Mafia. This is our episode about 90s rap and R&B. I'm the Don at the Desk, Anthony. Tonight in the booth, I got Amanda with me, and I got Izzy with me. We were just talking about Biggie Smalls. And now it's my turn. Now, I promised you, Izzy, I'd school you a little bit because you said you never learned anything from Tupac. Never did. I'm going to tell you right now, the, if you never learned anything from Tupac, then you didn't listen to Tupac the right way. Tupac Shakur, in my opinion, was the best rapper of all time. You are confused. I am not confused. See, Biggie... Biggie's amazing. I'm not going to take anything away from Biggie Smalls. Um, but Biggie, Biggie had the rap game. He had the crack game. He had his family. And that was all he rapped about. Tupac rapped about other things much bigger than just himself. Like, if, 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 if Biggie was rapping about New York, Tupac was rapping about the United States as a whole. He he was he had an interview when he was like seventeen years old, mm-hmm. and there you know he was asking then questions that we're still asking ourselves now. Why didn't I learn about like taxes in high school? Hold on, this was the same Tupac, seventeen years old, saying that he loves and respect women, and then flash forward five years, probably four years, three years. 
talking about we don't love them hoes. Fuck them bitches. Every on camera spitting at people. Every single, diabolical. Every, don't 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 don't. You can't even. Like, come on, man. Every every rapper has a song where they call someone a bitch. Everyone does. No, this, this wasn't a song. This was. A, 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 I don't know A street interview Or some shit Talking about Fuck them bitches We don't love them hoes See that's the thing With Pac He was he was the first one To to grab the mic And say something But he always He always had Something to say so Shit I guess so Okay Let me just Let me just throw Some, some tracks your way Because throw, you said Throw them my way You never, you never I'm gonna pop it. open the lyrics So So <laughs> All right, the first one I'm going to throw is a song called How Do You Want It, featuring KC and JoJo. Do you know that song, How Do You How Want do It? How do you need it? Yeah. That was his final single while he was still alive. That song is one of the best, fu- he has one of the best flows in that song. Excuse me. It's a, it, That song is hysterical, and it's all about... How do you want to fuck? I mean, you can sit there and make any argument about Tupac saying we don't love the bitches. They all did. Every rapper out there loves the bitches. And I'm paraphrasing here. But, yes, they all do love the bitches. And this song is all about finding a bad bitch. If Biggie was willing to suck a girl's dad's dick, (laughs) Pac wasn't about that shit. But Pac was talking about How the fuck do you want to do this? Let's fuck. Let's get this on. I'm a simple man. Play with the passport. A lot of... of Just like Aladdin, bitch. Get anything you ask for. (laughs) Yeah. A lot of... He talks about a lot of liquor. He does. A lot of... A lot of clubbing and all this. I mean, but it's just this song. But this just seems like a... A song for the club goers, you know? Okay, all right, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll pass that one off then. What about the song Dear Mama? That's a oh. good song. Dear Mama. That one, that song I actually like because he's talking about his up upbringing and how it was for him growing up, you know, only having coins, you know, to go food shopping with. He was, uh, you know, that, tra- that, that, that track, I like that. I like that track. What about Changes? Changes? That- yep. Yep. It- he talks about real life shit. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, I could be. I haven't listened. I haven't listened to all of Biggie's discography. I'll be or every song. Uh, but Tupac. I see no changes. Yeah, he he talked about the war on drugs, racism. Life worth living. Should <clears throat> I blast myself? He, he, he talked about racism. He talked about pr- police brutality. He talked about r- r- the relationship between black people and white people. He talked about poverty. He talked about the 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 cycle of violence in in black culture and 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 how it's hard to escape uh, the inner city or the ghetto. I don't remember any songs like Biggie attacking that shit well, all, no, all, all but, at once. But it's it's him as an artist, how he puts out his work. If he's more of a uh, a woke type of rapper and he wants to rap about how hard is it being a black teen in this era he could very well do that but it's how his delivery and how he was bringing that message out you know biggie was saying you know what i'm gonna talk about my depression and say how bad or the feeling that's you know gnawing at me that i want to kill myself and he puts out a track suicidal thoughts and boom he executes it to perfection now if tupac is doing that I, I heard changes. I don't like the beat. I For me, I don't like the flow. I love what he's talking about, but the then, delivery of it could have been better. Then we'll, then we'll then I'll take that one off the table, and then you have How Long Will They Mourn Me featuring Thug Life and Nate Dogg. Again, same idea of, of just like... Dear Mama was a good track, though. Yeah, Dear Mama's track. a great track, absolutely. But then you have uh, 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 How Long Will They Mourn Me, which is all about, you know, if I died tomorrow... <laughs> You know, Pac had this thing where he was one. He was always thinking ahead, and he would think about, you know, if I die, if something happens to me, how would this play out? How would the rest of the how would the rest of life happen? How would people take that? 
And he wrote songs like that. Life Goes On, How Long They Mourn Me, God Bless the Dead, Me Against the World. All of these songs pinning him in the worst situations. And Biggie did write Suicidal Thoughts. I'm not taking that away from him. But Pac did it four times or five times over. Nah, well, I'm not saying that, you know, Biggie, what makes him a good rapper is because he talks about his depression. I'm just saying because, okay, I take a topic and I talk, that's my choice, you know. It's not really because, you know, I decided to talk about this, so this makes me a good rapper. I take this topic, now how am I going to deliver it? Mm -hmm. You know, put it in your ears. You know, because that's what makes an artist an artist. If you, well, if you're really just going on the mic talking about nothing, then, you know, then you're just one of these hip-hop artists. I wouldn't call you a really an artist or a rapper or anything like that. You're just a hip-hop guy. That's it. Sure. But if you're, you know, somebody like Biggie or Tupac would take this topic and say, you know what? Tupac says, you know, I should talk about this because people need to know how it, how it was for me growing up. And then puts it on the track, but the beat is not so good, or the way he's delivering it is not so good, or you know the words he's using, uh, he, the words he's using is, you know, not rhyming so well. Whatever it is, it's just all about the delivery. You oh, know, the, the the topics he was talking about, I could say were way better than the ones Biggie was talking about, because Biggie was talking about he's gonna rob this Guns bitch and, and bitches and blow a hole in your chest and all this yeah and tupac was out there talking about you know what like i mean his, real life shit. Yeah. his very first single was a song called brenda's got a baby mm-hmm. you know I, and it was just talking about like the the plight of like you know of 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 teens growing up with without fathers with a, with mothers who are you know not even adults yet you know teen mothers and shit like that Right. You know, you have all you have you had real life shit and he you know, and it's not just like the things he saw immediately in his day to day life. Like I said, he was also thinking about what happens after we're gone. You know, I wonder if heaven's got a ghetto, ghetto gospel, um right. stuff like that. Some of the things he's talking about are, are pretty good and you know, they're impressive. Which is one of the reasons why like people like Kendrick Lamar, I would never like because he had good topics. Nobody he's, paid for me. But the way he's delivering it is terrible. Like, I don't like his voice. His beat selection is off. It's just not for me. But what he talks about, I could agree with. Same thing with J. Cole. But I like I like I J. Don't Cole. Like J. Cole. You don't like J. Cole? No. But I only you like see, one song from him. But do you like the messages he's delivering? He's though? got real shit. He talks about real he shit. I just don't like shit. how he raps. Exactly. So not everybody's going to like how you're bringing it to the table. But, you know, it's you, you got good intentions or the story you're talking about is real. Mm-hmm. And, it you know, it's it's something that people that people should hear. But the way you're talking about it, the way you put it on the track, your beat, it's just off. You know. I would think that the reason why, I mean, I, here's one reason why I think a lot of people, well, some people might be turned off by Tupac is because he was very intense. I was to say he's very aggressive. He's very aggressive. And I think the reason he was so aggressive was because he yeah. was someone who had something to say. Yeah, it's it's sure. like you're so excited to get these thoughts off your chest. And, like, when you start going, you don't stop because you honestly don't know when you're going to have the next opportunity to say more. And that's why, in the, although they had pretty much the same lifespan, 24, 25 years, and, yeah, okay, his Biggie's career was four or five years and Pox was seven or eight. The, Pox discography, his his... His songs, his albums just eclipse Biggie as far as content because he had five albums out when he was alive. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven albums after he died. Like Pac had Pac put out That's more albums. Tupac's not dead. He's living in Cuba with Michael Jackson. I, 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 I don't think so. And Elvis. I don't think so. I you mean, want, you want they, they died in similar ways. But well, yeah, they were they were both assassinated. They were both yeah. shot to death. No, I don't think I don't think. Well, they died in the in the in the car, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. Tupac was shot in a BMW, and 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this guy was shot in a top. Maybe they planned it together. No, man, they didn't plan it fucking together. <laughs> Drive by shooting. <sighs> you're you're an idiot. I'm just all right. Just you're just you're not you're not there. Anyway, right, go ahead, Can, continue. Well, here's something that I think was eerie, and I think a lot of people do. Uh, Tupac Shakur died before Biggie. Um, Tupac died in... Ah, sorry. Uh, hold on one second. Tupac died September 13th, 1996, right? And Biggie, if I'm not mistaken, died, I think, May of 97, yeah, no, March 9th, 1997. So you're figuring eight or nine months after Tupac was dead, right? Yeah. Well, on November 24th, 1998, a year and a half after Biggie dies, and almost two, uh, two and a half, two years and whatever after Tupac's dead, they release a song called... Mm-hmm. God Bless the Dead, where Biggie uh, Tupac starts out with saying, rest in peace to my motherfucker Biggie Smalls, and then he just keeps going. And now, there is not there is one more uh, person, there's actually a few more other people named Biggie Smalls in the rap game at the time, but... Really? Yes, there was. That's a kawinky dink. There was guys named, there was nicknames or whatever... Um, one of them was a guy who produced for, for, for Tupac, but it's just eerie how this song comes after both of them are dead and he's saying rest in peace and he died first. I'm telling you, it was plotted. It was. I don't think it was plotted. Amanda. <laughs> Biggie Smalls. But he didn't have. Man, was it somewhere I read? See, was he inspired by the Big Mac? Was he? I don't know. Oh I mean, Lord. people say that it was. It was another rapper named Biggie Smalls, um, whose real name was Drick, who who died in the early nineties. <laughs> but just why it, it almost lines up too perfectly. Yeah. Um, yeah. But again, it's a song called "God Bless the Dead," which again is all going back to the same idea of he's talking about things that are much bigger than just the world he sees um and just the life that you have to lead in order to, you know it's almost that thing of like if i if i do bad things for the right reasons do i get to heaven and i think that was an idea that was on Pac's mind constantly i don't think tupac i don't think biggie although he might have had that idea he didn't that's not what he was about that's not what he rapped about I think he was more focused on just making money and rapping about things right in front of him and not rapping about the things that are like falling in his head. But that's just my opinion of it. I could yeah. be I could be completely fucking wrong. But I think when it comes down to it based on what I know, right. I mean, you don't you don't even have to google this. Fucking Tupac's discography is Fucking immense. Well, compared to the yeah, four he had, albums, he had more time. Yeah, yeah, but he only had three, three more years, and he's done four, yeah, five or six times the amount. Okay, no, I could hear you. But and that's he wrote just a book. The, the The quantity of his work, you know, was which one of those? I could tell you all of the Biggie albums were good. All of them were good. All of them had hitters on him. Mm-hmm. You know, he made history with all of those tracks. Mm-hmm. Mostly all of those tracks. You know, I can name a few songs off of my head that I, I like of Tupac, but I can't say, well, I could listen to this album all day, but Biggie, I could probably listen to all three, no problem, you know? But like I said, he had more time. Imagine the work that Biggie could have did if he had a little bit more time. No, I, I understand that. You're not wrong. I mean, there's not every... I can't say that I've listened to every single Tupac album from track you know first one to last track you know, he, he just but, didn't have enough time you know imagine you know he could have been talking about those more bigger picture subjects like you know growing up as a black teen or being a minority and stuff like that you know how 
he probably could have talked about that, but he probably talked about, you know, what was more familiar with him growing up selling crack, being a gang member or whatever it is. A gang banger. Fucking this chick, that other chick. But he just, you know, with the time you have, three years of, well, three years in his career, you know, this, you know, and plus he was having the time of his fucking life, you know, he blew up so quick in those three years and he was on top of the rap game and unfortunately you know, ended for him. Well, if he used to read Word Up magazine. Okay. Man, oh, I hate you. Salt and pepper. Okay. Shut up. I'm going to shut up. Hey, if you got a bump, there's one album I know. I mean, there's several. Uh, obviously, everyone's opinion is different. But if you were to bump one Tupac album front to back, right. that would, in my opinion, the the album of, it is All Eyes on Me. I'll, it, check, I'll check it out. And that check is a two disc. Du- it's a double album. And the songs, all, I mean, it starts off with Ambitions as a Rider, which is right there. Coming at your fucking neck. My ambitions as a rock. And then you go into All About You, Scandalous, Got My Mind Made Up, How Do You Want It, Two of America's Most Wanted. Two of America's Most Wanted is a fucking banger of a track. Right. Hearts, uh, No More Pain, Hearts of Men. Life Goes On, again, All About Death, Only God Can Judge Me, Trading More Stories. Then you have a remix of California that you love, and I Ain't Mad At You. And that's just the first disc. Right, right. The second half of this album is Can't See Me, Show Do You Want to Be a Thug, Wonder Why They Call You Bitch. Like, there's so many <laughs> great fucking bangers on this album. And this is one one Tupac album I know I'm like, is that, oh, that's playing now? Crank it the fuck up and let it go. And that was the last album he put out while he was still alive. Right. You know? And then, the, I mean, there's so many theories about Pac still being alive. <laughs> He's in Cuba. Mm, that's one of them. And it's, you know, the next album that came out uh, was... You see, t- I feel like at that point in his career that I don't think Tupac had, you know, he had too much of a big mouth. I'm pretty sure if he's still alive, he'll come out and flex by now. Uh, like, I, yeah, them niggas couldn't kill me. I'm still out here. Like, I agree 100% with you. <laughs> I mean, 100%. I mean, he, in, on his tracks, he was calling out politicians, too. Don't sit there and tell me for a second that Tupac was able to keep his mouth shut during the last four years with Donald Trump no, in office. No, he was, Whether you're for Trump or against Trump, Tupac would have had something to say about it. No, nah, he would you know have what been, I mean? He would have been out here. He would have said something. But the idea where, like, Tupac's still alive, I mean, yeah, seven or six albums after he died. But the weird thing is, after his death... He changed his name to, well, he was supposed to change his name to Machiavelli, Machiavelli, and the album came out, it was called The Don Columinati, The Seven Day Theory, and on the cover is a picture of Tupac hanging from a cross like Jesus. Yeah. So the idea is, like, he's back, he didn't really die, and he's, like, risen, like, he was killed and then he's come back, and now, like, that's, you know, he's someone new. And of course, it's not it's not the case. It isn't. But I mean, then you had another album to come out, which was "Are You Still Down," and then they put they put out his greatest hits, and then they put out "Still I Rise," and then "The Rose That Grew from Concrete," and then "Until the End of Time," and then "Better Days." It's like every fucking year, there was another Tupac album coming out of some sort, whether it was a compilation, the greatest hits. A, a, a regular studio album It's like Did he really die or nah Exactly But I think by now I think the last official Tupac album Called Pac's Life Dropped in 2006 I think at this time It's like yeah it's done Nothing's come out then That was 15 years ago Tupac is dead ladies and gentlemen And so is Biggie yeah, um, so. It is what it is you know, but I think you know. There's no way that anyone can sit there and go, oh, "No, Pop, Pac's alive. He's still, he's still, he's still recording in Cuba." Get the fuck out of here. Either way, they made, even with their short careers, you know, there's be people that have been rapping for decades and they still can't get it right. You know, true. But these people in their short careers, they made a huge, huge impact on the rap game. To the point where we're still talking about it today and arguing if Tupac was better or if Biggie was better. You know, we just need to sit back and appreciate the work that they've done. They made a 
tremendous impact on the rap game, man. Yep. We owe it to them, but they're no longer with us. And I'm pretty sure if Tupac was still there, he would have showed his face already. And if you are hiding, we're waiting for you, buddy. Just come <laughs> on out. Yeah, no, too, like it's it's not happening. He's dead. Uh, and and you're absolutely right. With, I agree 100 percent with everything you just said. And I think that's a great way to wrap this episode up. So if you liked our episode tonight about 90s rap, be sure to check us out next week when we're discussing rap from the early 2000s. Amanda is very happy to talk about some of the things. I could see her already bubbling over there. So, so, yeah, we'll be talking about 2000s rap on our next episode next week. Go check us out on greenarrowmedia.org where you can see pictures of us. You can listen to the show right through the website. You can even check out our Etsy store where you can buy a mug or some other way to support us. And we also have a Patreon. And you can also listen to our sister podcast, Is This Real? If you enjoy this content, let us know. Send us an email. Drop us a like. Do something. Get in contact with us. We'd love to hear from you. I'm Anthony, the Don at the Desk. This has been Multimedia Mafia. And if you're thinking about checking out the podcast, forget about it. We're out. <laughs>